G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. I'm joined by Rufro, the mastermind behind one of Wavetech's most ambitious infrastructure projects. No matter what kind of server you play on, you're always going to run into the same issues. On technical servers in particular, when you have a centralized main storage holding every single resource that you could possibly need for any build project, those resources need to come from somewhere. Those places are of course massive overpowered farms that hold vast amounts of resources and are often located in remote locations. So Rufro, we seem to have a problem. Our bulk is completely out of redstone dust and this is obviously a very valuable commodity on a technical server. Where is the best place that we can get this material? Alright, let's go to the hub. This is merely a piece of Wavetech's piston bolt network. The brainchild of the one and only Rufro. To begin with, every important location has its own piston bolt station, such as our main storage located right in front of us. The piston bolt is what transports minecarts filled with either players or resources between different locations. So Rifro will give us a demonstration right here of how the actual piston bolt component works. As you can see, the minecart gets sent at a very high speed using the piston bolt system, which was a concept designed by a very old player named Ultimate Redstone. By default, every station will take the player directly to the piston bolt hub, which is located right here. We have to take the red bolt. That is another really crucial detail about these piston bolts. They're color coded and they designate the direction in which they travel. So we have four primary bolts traveling in all four cardinal directions. Every time we add a location, all we need to do is simply add a junction that goes off to that location. If we take a look inside of this lectern, we can actually see all the destinations that have been assigned to a particular bolt. So right now, it's set to take us to the concrete storage, but we want to go to the raid farm. So if we scroll through, you see the selection goes through and we have now selected the raid farm. Now, if we right click this minecart, the piston bolt will automatically take us directly to the location that we selected. And here we are, we're coming up to the intersection. So what happens is, we send a signal strength along the piston bolt, and that gets detected by the station, and we get automatically redirected to the correct location. Here we are, we're now at the nether side of our raid farm, which also has the storage. And as you can clearly see, these farms create an enormous amount of items. Let's check out our redstone. Oh. Where's all the redstone? Now we've got this massive bulk storage that is just perpetually empty of redstone. Well, I guess in order to demonstrate the piston bolt, we're going to have to look at a different resource. No gunpowder. We haven't really got that much emerald. So I guess glowstone is the best bet. Actually, looking at these hoppers, we've got a fair amount of emerald. So let's transport that to main storage. And at some point, we need to remember to run the raid farm and get more redstone. So here we have one of the most powerful features of Rufro's piston bolt network. When we have a massive bog system like this, full of an enormous amount of a resource, like our emeralds. Using this interface, we can tell it to automatically fill up chest minecarts with shulker boxes of those items and then dispatch those chest minecarts to the piston bolt. Because of course, we have the main limitation of the player's inventory not being able to store that many items. Chest minecarts also don't have that much storage capacity as well as we're basically only able to double the amount of items that the player can carry with a single chest minecart. 
But here's the most insane thing about Rufo's Piston Bolt Network. It can not only transport a single chest mine car at a time, but it can transport multiple stacked chest minecarts. So right now it's automatically filling up the chest minecarts with our boxes of emeralds and then dispatching them to the piston bolt at the surface. In here we can see all of our chest minecarts getting stacked up together. There we go, we have all nine of our chest minecarts filled with boxes of emeralds and the carts will sit and wait here for the player to take the piston bolt because of course one of the major challenges with item transportation is chunk loading which isn't actually an issue if you simply use the player to load the chunks so all I need to do is right click on this minecart and we should see these chest minecarts dispatched behind us apparently I have forgotten to do something Rufro, what have I done? <laughs> Alright, now that I'm spectating Rufro, he'll show us how it's actually done. So first, he activates that lamp right there, then he gets into the minecart, and now the chest minecarts will be dispatched after him. There we go. And now, they're in the bolt. And with the player constantly loading the area where the carts are, we have no issues with chunk loading whatsoever. Here he is, right on time. And there are our chest mine carts. In the middle of the hub we have this area underneath, where we can manage where the chest mine carts get sent to. So we should see them arrive just in a moment. I think I caught a glimpse of them. Where are they? Ah, there they are. Ah, perfect. So here are all of our chest minecarts. From here we can choose where we want to send them. So of course, the main storage is on our green piston bolt. So we want to select that. Now all we need to do is hit this button and it will send our chest mine carts to the green piston bolt. And there they are, waiting for us to use the piston bolt. And here is the final step in deciding the fate of these stacked chest mine carts. We simply select the destination that we want to send the carts to. We probably don't want to send them to Brazil, that will take a very long time. We want to send them to the main storage. So just like with the piston bolt stations, all we need to do is right click a minecart and the chest minecart will be dispatched behind us into the same bolt. There they are. So we get automatically ejected off at this point. Our chest mine carts will get redirected onto a separate line. Seems like somebody's actually disconnected the rail line, so we're going to have to put it back together like so. There we go. Now they're being sent to main storage. This right here is a minecart unstacker, which is quite old and outdated and is currently broken. And so our chest minecarts aren't going to be unloaded into main storage at this stage. But you can clearly see the potential of this infrastructure and how amazingly powerful it is to be able to send a massive amount of items anywhere on your piston bolt network. This design will be replaced by a new one when we update the main storage. What's that roof row you figure out how to get it to work? <laughs> Wait, so if I press this button, will it actually start loading main storage? Alright, I guess we can try it. Hey! It's actually working! The box system is actually sorting it. 
and our emeralds have all filled up. Alright, cool, so we were actually able to demonstrate automatically filling up the main storage using the Piston Bolt network. Well done, Riffro. So now that we've demonstrated how the console works in survival, we can head over to this world download that Rufra has so kindly prepared for us. From here, we can actually go over all the individual components of the Piston Bolt network. To begin with, we're going to focus on what is perhaps the largest challenge for building a Piston Bolt network like this, and that is handling stacked chess minecarts. You might have heard Rufra earlier refer to these entities as a non-Newtonian, and that's with good reason because stacked minecarts behave very strangely. If I push these right here, you can see they give themselves infinite momentum. And one of the primary catastrophic failure mechanisms of the stacked chest minecarts in a piston bolt is that something weird happens and causes the minecarts to unstack. So here I'll give a demonstration of a situation which can cause the system to break. In this case, none of the minecarts actually unstacked. But with repeated trials, tiny discrepancies in the starting momentum of the minecarts can cause massive issues down the line. And all of these problems are very difficult to predict. But fortunately, Rufro has spent an enormous amount of time working with these stacked chest minecarts and finding out ways to make them work reliably. According to Rufro, if you can simply stack the carts together into a piston bolt like so, and then start the piston bolt and have them traveling in a perfectly straight line, everything should be perfectly fine. But apparently, if you have the stacked minecarts turn a corner like this, that's when issues can occur. And if you introduce enough corners, the discrepancies can add up and then you can eventually get carts splitting off from the stack. There we go, that cart's just split off, and now all hell's gonna break loose. However, Rufo discovered a very simple solution to stacked minecarts turning corners. By the way, here's a handy trick for all of you in creative mode when you're designing something and want to remove minecarts without damaging anything. You can actually throw snowballs and if you're in creative mode, snowballs will instantly kill entities that you shoot with them. But back to Rufo's elegant solution, all you need to do is put a detector rail here and then a sticky piston here at every corner. Now, every time our minecarts turn a corner, the sticky piston will extend and force the carts to stack back together before allowing them to move again. This prevents them from unstacking as they accelerate. This simple but elegant solution to stack chest minecarts is actually what this entire piston bolt network relies upon. Which is why it is quite alarming that ever since 1.18, this simple mechanism is now completely broken simply because it exhibits this weird behavior in this particular direction. This inconsistency is quite disappointing, especially given all the new features coming to minecarts that will make them useful for so many contraptions. I've already made a bug report on this issue and I'll link it down below in the description. Be sure to check it out. But basically what this means is that if Wavetech were to update to 1.18, our entire piston bolt network would become useless. Hence why it's taking so long for us to update. But frustrations aside, we now understand the core challenges with handling stack chest minecarts. Our next step is actually building the piston bolts. Now piston bolts can stretch for thousands of blocks. But fortunately we have helper flying machines that can do the most tedious tasks automatically. To build a piston bolt, you need to first make sure that the path along the bolt is clear. Then you can simply lay down some track elevated one block off of the floor. For the majority of the track, all you need to do is lay it down in a straight line, making it a mostly mindless task. However, for bits of rail that you can't get the machine access to, you will need to manually curve the rails. But fortunately, curving around manually is very simple. All you need to do is go to the surface you want to place the curved rail on, place down a rail one block in front, then place down another rail to the side. Now you can place down your curved rail and break these two and then repeat in the opposite direction for the next rail. However, in some directions such as the negative X or the negative Z, 
you will need to apply a slightly different process. Place down a redstone block above the rail that you need to curve. And then it should stick to the correct direction. However, if I'm curving rails in either the positive X or the positive Z, it's very straightforward as all I need to do is place down these rails and these rails and they'll automatically snap to the correct orientation. And just to demonstrate the same thing for the positive Z direction, we obtain a curved rails as simply as that. The result of these different behaviors in the different directions also means that we need different helper flying machines for the different directions. So here we've got the flying machine for doing the negative axes. And then over here we can see the flying machine for the positive axes. Once you have curved all the rails leading up to your helper flying machine, all you need to do is remove the subsidian block, get in the minecart and then break this torch. And the machine will automatically curve the rails down the line. So bear in mind, this rail line could be thousands of blocks long. And of course, don't forget to add an end stop. There we go, that is an entire rail line curved automatically by a helper flying machine. In order to help with building the piston bolt itself, Rufo has also made this helper flying machine, which allows you to place the pistons and some solid blocks in a straight line like this, and then you can go over it with the machine to build them into the correct shape of the piston bolt. So if I go ahead and break this sign, we can see the machine at work and then it builds the pistons and the blocks of the piston bolt. You will of course need to go through and then place down the repeaters. And depending on the orientation of your piston bolt, these repeaters might have to be comparators in order to carry the signal strength for the station selection. And then in the instructions given to me by Rufro, Setting up a new junction at any point on the piston bolt simply involves taking a schematic of the junction, lining up that schematic with the piston bolt itself, like so. And to demonstrate, I'm simply going to paste it in with replace behavior all. And now, if I select the third destination, I should arrive at that junction over there. So here is our station selection. So one, two, three, because it is the third junction we have on this bolt now. I right click this minecart, we drop down, activate the bolt, we pass through the first junction, second junction, third junction, it picks us up and redirects us to the side. It is literally that easy to add additional junctions to these piston bolts. And of course, you can repeat the same process for the stations. Simply take a schematic, line up the schematic with the piston bolt from our junction, and then simply build the schematic in place. If I take this minecart, it should be taken directly back to the hub. There we go. One limitation I will point out is that no matter where you are, if you take a piston bolt that is returning, it will always return to the central hub of your server. This is because the station selection only works in the outgoing direction. For incoming minecarts, we cannot actually redirect them towards different stations. So for example, I can't go from this station directly to this station. Instead, I would have to go from this station to the hub, then back out to this station. This is a massive limitation. However, it does provide a massive advantage as well. It massively simplifies the integration of the piston bolt, because what it means is that we can have a centralized hub to handle wherever any minecarts need to go. 
And this makes installation of locations on the back end extremely simple as I literally demonstrate by simply dropping in the schematics. And finally, we have the farm storages. This is one extremely massive bog design that River made before I joined Wavetech. I then went and improved upon this design with this new one that we are now using on all of our latest farms. These bulks are of course designed with integration with our Piston Bolt network in mind. I've already demonstrated how the integration with the Piston Bolt network works. So instead, let's focus on the input. This bulk with the extremely large slices is ideal for farms that have many item outputs that you want an enormous amount of storage for with each item. Therefore, Rufo has included this massive item sorting array, which also includes shulker box loaders. This smaller bulk design is optimal for farms that only have a single desirable output. As such, these bulk slices essentially merge together, meaning that once this bulk slice is full, the items will overflow to the next slice and so on. So despite this bulk being smaller per slice than this bulk, we can compensate for that by having multiple slices per item type. Then all you need to do is supply the system with chess minecarts and you can use the piston bolt integration. Blimey, that was one heck of a technical montage. A special thanks to Rufro for authorizing me to make this video showcasing his amazing piston bolt network concept. This is simply one of those cases where I've seen somebody else's idea implemented on the server that I play on, which I think that more people need to know about. Because I reckon that any technical server could benefit enormously from having such a well thought through network as this one. So I hope you found this video insightful. I will be leaving the world download that Rufo prepared for us down in the description. And I will see you all next time.